The Crash Course Podcast is brought to you in part by DerbyParts.com, Smash Masters, Derby Parts, and Derby Inc. Magazine. Live it, breathe it, be it, Derby Inc. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FingerLinks1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. And now your host, Chris Marport. Good afternoon, good evening, lots to talk about tonight on the Crash Course. We're going to be weighing in with um, one Ben Host about some of the rule changes with Total Destruction, <laughs> some of the new developments with the Ontario County Fairgrounds. We're going to be catching up with Brandon Lowe, promoter out in Kansas, who is turning his own county fair around by going back to the chain and go rules, and then we'll be catching up with Randy Maslowski a little bit later on. I am Chris Marquardt. Joining me in studio, we've got Brian Tompkins, Josh Decker. He's got the night off. He's in Ohio. Hopefully he's online watching. we also got a lot of guys from Team FTS out there in, uh, in Missouri who are getting ready for their first run at Blizzard Bash. Those guys are out there listening, so say say hi to Josh if you get the chance. Uh, everybody out there in the chat room. We'll be getting Steve Bucknam on a little bit later on, uh, but we're going to try and bring Brandon in, uh, Brandon Lowe in via Skype. Before we do that, just wanted to get some thoughts. First, Total Destruction, we're going to be hearing a lot about them. They uh, uh, just launched the 2014 rule package, which now allows it, the Ontario County Fairgrounds, namely, uh, the Canandaigua Derby will allow Imperials. Uh, that's some some of the big news that we've we've come across this week, and, and Ben was involved in the rules discussion for that. I like the move. I'm a fan of it. I think it's a good deal, and, and I know there's a lot of other people that are going to be a fan of that too, but there's um, as soon as you make that one change, there's a lot of questions that follow. How has life been this week? Oh, it's 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 gotten pretty interesting <laughs> last last 24 hours, I'd say. Um, it's not just Ontario County, um, At Otsego County down in Morris uh, that they're we're allowing them there too, which those guys are loving life because they're they're imperial fanatics down there. Um, it's kind of. I hate to compare it to another promoter, but we're we're gonna set it up like like John King has with his Imperials. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're gonna run a separate qualifying heat, and then uh, all depending on how many there are, you know, if we'll we'll take you know probably a couple out of the heat and uh, and send them to the feature to run with the regular V8s. And uh, I personally myself, I think it's a good deal because. I, Imperials is one of my favorite cars. Uh, <laughs> so are you going to be building cars now? <laughs> no, <addition? laughs> no. It's um, it's just uh, they have a uh, I don't know an aura about them. People think they're unbeatable, but I mean they're 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 just like any other car. They can be beaten. Um, now with, on top of that, with old three and newers, being able to do cradle swaps, it, it's all around. I think it's going to really liven the shows up. You know, in, in terms of, of, as you said, livening the shows up, I mean, is there enough support out there to really make this change? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's guys uh, there's guys all the time. I mean, it's not just uh, basically it, it's open to Imperials, but Y-Framers, the, the older Chrysler Y-Framers, uh, they're allowed to do uh, subframe swaps. They can put uh, Imperial subframes in them. Um, I'm also allowing the 74 to 78 shockers. Um, they can they can imperial swap subframe swap those two. Um, in you know they can be competitive. I mean it's it's anybody can compete against an imperial. I, I think that's a big scapegoat people have been using for years to get them banned, saying that oh it's an imperial it's an imperial we can't beat them. Well, if you're doing that much to the Fords. Let the Imperials run. Even well, if the Imperials are running it's, stock. It's, it's not even really, I mean, it's not even really the Fords. I mean, it, it's, yes, they're getting a little bit, but GMs get to do stuff too. I mean, it, it's, it, there's, when you look at the rules and look at the rules, it, it's, each car maker, I mean, you can ba you can build a very competitive car. And, um, There's been Suicide Lincolns there the last couple of years. When was the last time Imperials were allowed at, at Canandaigua? Off uh, way back. I mean, that was. I think probably the f like the. F I remember the first show that Steve had there, um, when he took over. It was he had an incredible turnout, and there was Imperials and Roundbacks, and it came down to uh, Chip Snyder and or not Chip Chip Brown and yep. one of the uh, Clemens out of Buffalo. Yeah, and that was yep. oh god, I can't say how many that years because it makes us old, but 
Yeah, that was it, a long time ago. Yeah. I, I think that might have been the last time. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember there's uh, a couple shows. I mean, that they had uh, they had the old box cars there, and and uh, I think Seeger, Jay Seeger was was running one one year, and um, I mean, that's way back when uh, when Frankie. I think it was uh, when Frankie Rendell was still around, or maybe yeah, it was shortly after. I think so. Um, but no, it's been a long time. It's been quite a while. Um, but like I said, it's I I really think it's gonna really liven the shows up. I mean, I I, I personally myself like people stand on the gas and and uh, <laughs> the fans. I mean, the fans don't want to see a bunch of baggers out there, and that's that's what I'm striving for this year. Well, it should. Um, I mean, it should get rid of them because you've got Imperials chasing everybody around, if nothing else. Well, yeah, they all bring Imperials. <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, there's it's not like there's gonna be 15 of them in a feature. You know, it's it's you know. Two, you know, depending on the, the imperial heat size, um, you know, anywhere from two, possibly if there's a a, a lot of them in a the heat, we might pull three out of a heat. But what's the car count that you're shooting for? Car count we're shooting for. Well, we try to shoot for as many cars as we can get. But you know, it's it's you know, we we increase the payouts a little bit. Um, right. Just just you know, just to try to give back a little bit more and and. and you know, it's just it, hopefully it'll be a steady increase every year. Um, you know, that's that's all you can hope for. I think I think it'll help the show. I mean, I this year I went to Black Rock at the end of the year, and that was you know basically a, an Imperial Fest, and it was it was a good show. It'd been mm-hmm. a long time since I'd seen them Imperial. You know, yeah, that many Imperials run. Well, the the fall they, show at Black Rock was great. The spring right. show there was only three Imperials. Right. The fall show there was yeah. quite a few. They There's... said go, and those guys were on the boards. And I mean everybody, not just the guys the Imperials. You know the you know everybody there. It was you know I, I think the Imperials as a whole helped to raise the show. Yeah. Everybody was you know well, everybody was driving hard. Well Brookfield, yeah Brookfield, Brookfield always... uh, wheel days. They they had some. It was an amazing car count they had there. Yeah. The Imperial Heat was insane. Um, there wasn't nobody. There was no baggers in that show. Yeah. Right. And there's there's uh, a large amount of drivers from there that we see in Morris. Sure. Um, some of them traveled up to the Black Rock show. Um, there was a, there were several of them up there. I mean, uh, right. there was one of the Ingrams was there. Chad Winnie was there. Yep. Uh, Josh Buell. Um, one of the. Menards, yeah, Menard. one of the Menards. They, yeah. they were up there. Yeah, they had a, they had a, they had a good time. And then then Brett, Brett and Richie both they both had Imperials yeah. there. And and uh, uh, Jason Bellis and Josh both had those Cadillacs Jason. that were there as well. Um, guy who's going the opposite direction with with taking his rules and getting away from Imperials and, and the heavy build stuff, going the way of the bolt on stuff, um, or excuse yep. me, going the way of chain and bolt type rules. We've got uh, Brandon Lowe. Brandon, can you can you hear us? You got us okay? I got you, Chris. I can hear you fine. All right, great. You know, welcome, welcome to the crash course presented by the Keystone Nationals. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you guys uh, give me an opportunity to kind of get the word out there about our uh, local demo. Yeah, I mean, we we talked a little bit earlier this week. Tell us a little bit more about what's going on out there with your fair, and and, and you know, first of all, you know where it is, how people can find more information about it, and and what happened there that led you to the decision to go the way of the chain and bolt rules. Okay, uh, just a little. Uh, uh, on me, I started this demo. I mean, it's my hometown. I grew up, was born here and raised, and uh, started in '96. I turned 18 years old and went out to this demo. And I believe in the late '90s we had 80 some cars at at a local hometown fair demo, and it just slowly started deteriorating. I joined the army. I left for a couple five years, and when I came back, it just wasn't what it used to be. And as we got to see what was happening was the rules weren't being enforced. So everybody just took the rules and threw them in the trash can and did whatever you wanted to do your car. Cause you knew if you showed up, they were going to let you in. Uh, in 06 would have been the first year I ran after I got out of my, out of the military. And, uh, I had over $4,000 in my car. And I think the prize money at that time was like a thousand dollars to win. It was ridiculous, but you had to you had to build something like that to win. Um, then 2012, uh, they had seven cars at this demo. 2011, they had nine cars. So 
in 2012, we went to the fair board and said, hey, you guys can't keep doing it this way. You're running it into the ground. Nobody wants to come because they know they can't get a fair shot. The money's not there. We've got to do something. And, and I pretty well laid it on the line to them of, hey, this is what I think you ought to do. And a month later, they called us back, brought me and uh, two other guys in that was with me and, and said, we'll sit down with you. You tell us what we need to do, and we'll do it. So we sat down, and we went back to the old school. I mean, I was listening to your, your podcast last week, and uh, Steve Senior, that's basically what we went back to, what he was talking about. We mm-hmm. went back to a chain and bolt only. Um, you can run six bolts in the hood, two through the frame, four bolts in the trunk, two through the frame. You can nine wire it up, chain the doors shut, stock steering column, no high horsepower motors, uh, stock rear end, just a GM bolt, you know, GM to GM, Ford to Ford. Uh, same way on the bumpers, you can swap your bumpers out, but you got to use your stock brackets off that car. Bolt GM bumpers, the GM cars, Mopar to Mopar, Ford to Ford. Nice. We had 19. It's a decent set of rules, isn't it? Well, we had 22 cars come in um, last year, enter, and we had 19 in the demo. We went from seven cars to 19 in our first year. I bet. Yeah, nice. that's and that's that's some good response right there. Absolutely. I mean, you, you know, you, you you tripled, just about tripled. Um, and, and our whole our whole concept of this thing is getting some of the rookies back. That I mean, I don't want to see this sport die. And just like Steve was talking last week. I have so much money into a car to compete now. Uh, I mean, you guys seen the Blizzard Bash cars. There's no rookie going to go build one of those cars like that unless he's got three jobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, at 18 years old, you're not going to do that. Uh, this way, it gives them an option to come in, buy a car, you know, a hundred, couple hundred bucks, throw it together and come have fun. And when you scrap it, you get your money out of it. We were talking a little bit in some of our travels about you know the the days of the of the two hundred and three hundred dollar cars are gone. But the thing is, is like we talked about the 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 younger generation now, the rookie group. They don't remember those days because they never saw them. No. But I was watching online. You know, as we get closer to Derby season and everybody's getting their tax returns, <laughs> more and more cars are coming up for sale. And in all of, I'm seeing some decent stuff, four hundred to six hundred bucks. It doesn't seem like it's that bad to me. But when you look at what you have to do once you get that shell. Yeah. In order to compete at some of those those more extreme build shows, it's nice to see some of these shows that are that are gravitating back towards that 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 stock style rules like what they've got out here. Now this is the Crowley County Fair, and it's going to be in Winfield, Cal- Kansas, right? Cowley County. Cowley County. And uh, it's in it's in Winfield, Kansas, and it's uh, it's going to be the first week of August, right? Yeah, the, the first uh, Friday in August. I think it's actually the first. And and that's actually going to be the farthest travel away from home for Ben with total destruction being up in Malone that same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or actually, you might be headed to Malone, coming back from Morris, because that's that that crazy double yeah. where you just go yeah. the length of the state yeah, as many right. times yeah, as you from, can. <laughs> from Thursday to Monday, we're traveling from Oneonta, New York, to Malone, New York, like. Three Three times. times. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But uh, question for you, uh, what's your your separation uh, to make it a quote-unquote high-performance motor? Well, and that's that's where we as judges have to make that that, uh, determination. Right. Um, And that's what I've told them. Like if you come in with a, a motor that you've rebuilt, yeah, it might be pulled out. It might have a little cam. In. Am I going to be able to tell the difference? No. But can I tell a, a red line motor, a bald motor, from a maybe a little bit above stock motor? You right. can tell the difference. Right. I mean, you can hear it in the pipe alone. The difference. Yeah, she's... She... The only reason I... The only reason I did that is just to try to get the rookie guys to have a little bit more of a chance. Sure. Uh, I mean, if they don't get drove over out there. Here's my my little twist on that that I've had because I don't have – I know friends of mine have had six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars 9000 derby motors. I mean, I got a small block Chrysler that, that I've run for years and might have $1,500 in it. But let me tell you what, my biggest satisfaction in the world – is going out there with my fifteen hundred dollar motor and thrashing a seven or eight thousand dollar motor, 
because yep. you know what? In in the end, junk my motor about fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> you know that sucks exactly. to me, but you know <laughs> it, it's going to hurt hurt a little bit more when when somebody's got a broken block on an eight thousand dollar motor. <clears throat> you know that's oh, yeah. where. You know that's well, where. We're not Go we're ahead. not letting them make cradles or deep keys or anything. I, you probably wouldn't see a lot of them. I mean, a lot of guys wouldn't want to take that chance either. Right, 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 right. How mean, much? They're how, not going to take the chance to break that. How much are you guys paying to win out there, Brandon? Oh, that's that was another thing. We went in and, uh, you know, I threw these numbers out to the fair board and they jumped all over it. Um, we're paying $1,500 to win, 1250 per second, 1000 for third. 750 for fourth, 500 for fifth, 400 for sixth, 250 for seventh, 100 for eighth. Wow. Yeah, so my entry fee, my entry fee is 20 bucks, and you get a mechanic in with you, and then if you make it out of your heat to the final, you get your 20 bucks back. If you go to the consolations and make it to the final, you get your 20 bucks back there too. And this is. Where's this in Kansas? <laughs> <laughs> it's in Winfield. <laughs> We're we're about an hour south of Wichita, Kansas. Wow. Yeah. That's Man, if that wasn't up. a twenty-two haul, twenty-two hour haul, that'd be worth going to run. I know, right? Holy I mean, cow. It, it, so if you get eighth, you get hundred bucks. Uh, yeah. yeah. So basically, you've, bucks. Yeah. So basically, you've had some good sponsors and the fairs put up some good amount of money for it, man. Oh, and that's the thing. There. The Valley County Fair doesn't have any sponsors. They they do this all on their own. Right. Uh, the money they make, they put it up. We had uh, four thousand spectators last year in stands. Yeah. See, see, that's nice when you can get get your fair to actually contribute like that. You know, I mean, there's I'm sure there's certain fairs around this area that could pay some some real good money if they just you know get come off, off their, it a little. No, just get off their wallet. You know. Exactly. You got to come uh, off the money. You know, that's what. That's basically what they asked. You know, what would it take to get, us to, to get more cars? And I said, if you guys put up the money, the cars will come. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, that's fair the thing. Inspections, is... Fair inspections and get money for payout, cars will come. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, so many of these fairs around here that are that are lamenting their their short counts and and their shows are going so fast and and you got to have a heat that's based off of time or something like that because you don't want to ruin all the cars. All the... Pay more. Right. Pay more. Yep. If you're doing a stock show, you can actually shake a few more cars out of the woodwork with a little bit more money. Not a ton. I mean, 1500 to win isn't isn't anything exorbitant. You're basically doubling the winner's purse. Now, what they've done, second through eighth, it's is extraordinary. Oh, yeah. I mean, to get, to, to get the fair to come off like that. And, and they could have easily gone with the heavier weld rules and made some sort of crazy first place money, second and third with a little bit, and not even necessarily paid anything other than their pit pass. But they didn't, and, and that's one of the things that, that one of the reasons why I really wanted to bring Brandon on to talk about this is we've had this we've had this talk time and time again about the split. You know, we're going extreme, or we're going stock, and these guys went stock, and they did the payout like what what Kyle at, at Waterloo has always talked about. Kyle Cosworth with CNC Auto has always tried to instead of putting the money on top to pay it back down through. So now they pay back through like forty third, and. <laughs> And what? <laughs> and and Brandon, you know, Brandon did the same thing. They got really good money waiting for you back in eight. So even if some of these high end guys that that might have that intimidation factor show up, you can check off like these are going to be the top three. I still have a chance of getting, you know, somewhere between fourth and seventh. I still got a chance at making back at least my gas money plus my entry. See, that's great. Yeah, and I mean, wow. the only really show that that personally I'm involved with that even comes. I mean, they don't even come close to to that. The depth. Uh, that, that, well, I mean, they, they pay, pay back quite a bit. And that much, they, though? And they get not that They're much. They're paying 12, I mean, the 1250 yeah, is a feature well, around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's but awesome. They get 100, is Franklin County. They get 100 yeah. plus cars pre registered each night for two nights. And they pay back. I mean, it's not a substantial amount of money like like they're talking there, but it, I mean, it's in the hundreds all the way, all the way back to like fourth or fifth. And, uh, they get the cars. Brandon, are you are you uh are you campaigning tonight? I see you're wearing an O'Reilly shirt. Is that is that is that a hint to O'Reilly? <laughs> is that <laughs> got my, got my blizzard vest? <laughs> <laughs> thought... it's, cold, it's cold here in Kansas. I had to put my hoodie on. Uh, yeah, we're we're aware of how cold it can get that part of the country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty crazy. Uh Brandon, did the guys put on a pretty good show for you? I mean, were they driving hard and tearing stuff up? 
Yeah, they really did. You know, I was surprised that some of the cars that came in there, you know, I, I looked at them and I was like, oh, my gosh, this, you know, this car is going to get destroyed out there. And it really opened my eyes to the um, – even the stock build, you know, the guys, the two guys that won the show and drove out of there, their cars, they could have ran them easily again. And they put on a heck of a show. I mean, they, the title two, they backed up and went and was a nose four or five times. So, you know, hey, we're, we're here to put on a show and we're here for the money. So, what kind of cars are they? Uh, the guy that won it was in a 76 New Yorker. And the guy yes. that took a second was a 74 in Paul. Nice. Even better. Nice. <laughs> there, so, for all you, yeah. for all you Bullpark guys, there you go. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. We've got, uh, we've got a guy down here. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard him, uh, Shane uh, McLaughlin, and he won quite a few Kim Bolts last year, and then he came to our show and took first, and uh, uh, Matt Cole took second. So, cool. so, so their names out there. They both drove an excellent show. Mm -hmm. Cool, excellent. So, I mean, kind of going to the to the money. You know, I don't know about you guys, but when I when I pull up, I mean, I still run the most. Besides, you know, I I throw this one and go run it elsewhere. But I don't really ever care what first place is. When I look at the payout, I want to see what third is. Right. Because <laughs> in my mind, I've got a better chance of getting in that third board area than I ever do of getting to that first. Uh, I. You no, know, your, your probability of, of you being the last guy running is, is probably not the greatest. So I always want to see what third is, and we can go away with a thousand dollars a third. Yeah, that's you pretty can't impressive. Complain. Yeah, yeah, I pretty much just concentrate on like Mad Dog or Bust the Show because <laughs> I, I just well, and, I, I'm I'm a I, I'm in it for the for the glory and for the glory of the hits and 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 making the crowd get on their feet. I mean that's that's what it's all about for me right now. I well, mean, they put up. Uh, they, they put up $150 this year for Mad Dog, too. I mean, it's not a lot, but it, it's just more money added to the pot. All right. Yep. That's awesome. That'll buy you dinner. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, anything's better than nothing. You know, that's the way to look at it. Yeah. That's cool. Cool. Yeah. Can you park on top of a Skylark? Nope. We kind of did something different this year, too, and, and just for the rookies, if we get at least six rookie drivers that have never driven a demo before, we're going to put them in first heat by themselves to give them the longest amount of time to fix the cars after they come out to get oh. to the con to the final. That's cool. That's cool. And yeah, and that way that it's their own, uh, I guess, no seat time or right. no well, seat it, time first year driver. Yeah. They, it, they'll be against each other. Equal experience. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's yeah. not putting somebody first year out there against somebody who's been doing it for 20 years. You know, sure. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's and, fun. you know, give them a fair share. Give them a little bit of a, a little bit of a break in time, and, and they're going against people that appears with their own uh, abilities. Right, right. So nice. And then they give them the, the longest time to fix their car up. That's cool. Mm. Yeah, that's a good so, move. Yeah, I'd be I'd be really interested to see what your car count is this year. I mean, usually a, a changeover like that, it, it's what I call a feel out year. You know, everybody wants to see how everything's going to ro roll, and uh, you sh you guys should have a one wicked car count this year. Yeah. I sure hope so. You know, we did something uh, last year. The fair board really locked, and, and we're going to do it again this year. Um, instead of having the local judges, the you always get local judges. You always hear at the fair, oh, they're getting favoritism because they know the judges. Uh -huh. Well, I went put out of the county, and I hired six guys to come over and judge this for another county. So nobody even knew who they were uh, when they got there. And this year, I'm going to go find six judges from another county and pay them to go over here and judge our show. Yeah, that's, that's the way to that's do the it. That's the way to do it. Yep. Ben's already, <laughs> Ben's already thinking, I hope they pick Seneca County. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll come out. <laughs> <laughs> go that far, you might as well haul a car. <laughs> that's awesome. That way nobody knows who the judges are year to year. And, uh, you know, I kind of keep that quiet until the day of the show. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Very good idea. Yeah. It's, I, you know, I think it's great. I mean, I, I like watching, and I've, I've said it before, I like watching the big build shows. You know, they're great to watch. But, I mean, you know, a lot of guys, you know, me included, can't afford to buy that stuff this time, which is fine. You know, yep. it, it's great for guys, you know, that can't do it to have something like that. I mean, that's, you know, that, that you can still get a good car and, you know, run some good stuff and have a good payout. I mean, that's what it's about, you know, and have a good time. Well, after we 
this last year, I had promoters from other counties calling me up, talking to me, saying, hey, man, can, can I have a copy of those rules that you know, we'd like to look into it? And uh, I've got confirmation already on two other demos that are going to run these exact rules within 100 miles of here. And I'm waiting on confirmation from two more uh, that are probably 40 miles from here that are willing to go to these rules. So we could end up with five derbies in this area, all the same rule package. Which awesome. is great because, yeah. I mean, then guys can travel. I mean, that's, that's exactly that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that way, as promoters, we can help each other out. I mean, they can yep. help me out, and I, you know, somebody from their town is going to come here, and, and my guys from down here are going to go there. And that's I think that's what you need. I mean, I, I, I think you need promoters that – you know, want to work together to build the sport. I mean, I, I understand I understand promoters aren't in it to lose money. You know, they're, they're obviously doing it because they want to make some money. And that's great. I understand it. But, you know, it's good when they work together to improve the sport as a whole, too. Sure. I mean, I think you need that. Well, I tell you what, my guys that come and help me do this, uh, of course, you know, we got kids in uh, the fair and, and kids that that have animals down there. And they paid for our camping and gave us some uh, tickets to the grandstand. And that was our payment, and I was happy as could be with. It. Sure. You know, I, I just want to see my hometown derby back the way it was. Uh-huh. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> so well, well take Brand- that money and give it back to the drivers. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can't go wrong there, Brandon. We appreciate you coming on, and and we got the Skype line working a little bit, and uh, that worked out pretty good. And looking forward for more information as as things go on. You can get a hold of Brandon Lowe on Facebook. Just look him up. He's got a picture of a derby car. You can pick him out of the crowd. <laughs> and uh, you know, make sure you jump online. Look at look up uh, Collie County Fair. Check them out. They got a great rule set, guys. You gotta you gotta get out there in your neck of the woods. Get out there and support them, especially if there's other promoters looking to get on board. Hey, I sure appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, man, no problem. We'll catch up with you soon. All right, thank you. Thanks, Have a good one, Brad. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Appearing on the DerbyParts.com Skype line, we got Brandon Lowe. So it was cool to catch up with him and. Uh, Outside of like a, I mean, like a Cuba or something like that. I didn't even know how good Cuba pays all the way back, but I mean, that's that's it's an really impressive good payout. That's <laughs> an impressive payout. That's a lot of money they're paying out, and, and it's in it. But that's it is a hundred. You got thirty seven. You got thirty seven fifty in the top three. Right. Yeah. I mean, but you know what? In in all reality, it'd be great if you if if every show could could, could do, do something like that. But yeah. but the backing out there. Compared, oh, yeah. p- the demographics for, with the backing is way different. I mean, you, you go, you travel out west, you got corporate sponsors, you got the fairs yeah. that are huge. I mean, their county fairs are like our our state fair, and um, it, it, that makes a big difference. All the difference in the world, you yeah. know? right? And then it, it'd be nice to get, and, get and our. That's- that's just a fair deal yeah. out there. That that is just a fair just a program. Fair. That's just a fair that yeah. does it. And that's that's the thing. I mean, there's definitely some county fairs around here that could ante up and, and pay oh. a little more. Yeah. You know, I mean for that, sure. that just goes without saying. Yeah, for you know? sure. I mean, and it would be nice to see that. I mean, you know, I I really th- I, I think a big problem is is that a lot of the fair boards don't have any derby guys or girls on them. You know what I mean? They just think you still buy, you know, buy cars for fifty bucks. And well, there's a lot of there's a lot of incorrect mindset in that, yeah. in that too. Yeah. That's I mean, they're just not thinking the way that that, that the way that things have gone, where things yeah. are right now. They're just not thinking they're, about it. Yeah. I mean, if the cost of milk has gone up, everything else has too. It's more expensive to get the cars. It's more expensive to build the cars. Well, wow, they just guys, they just don't understand the progression of everything. I mean, it's just it's it's when you put all your eggs in the demolition derby basket at, at the fair. And you see your car counts go down. You can't wonder. Yeah, you, you should. What, be you can't what wonder. You can't wonder anything. No. If you're not doing anything, you, you got to spend it to make it. You know, you can take out the same four ads in the same four locations every year. If you're not getting any more cars, yeah. you got to get out there and do something. And Brandon's the kind of guy that he did that. And it was good to see. Spend money to make money. And that's I mean, right. that's the thing. You know, it was like back in you know back in the day, like when Ben and I started. I mean, we were finding cars for hundred bucks, seventy five bucks. We'd run them, take them to the scrapyard, and. It would be great if we got 50 bucks back at the scrapyard. But now the scrap price has gone up, and you can't find any cars for under. Everybody's a everybody's you know, a, an American picker expert now. You know, Everybody exactly, knows what their stuff's worth. Exactly. You, know, and you, you just, I mean, you can't, I mean, you know, a four-cylinder year or a six-cylinder, you're going to get, you know, probably three and a half, four hundred bucks out of scrap with it. And, you know, that's without cutting off the catalytic converters and, you know, take the aluminum rims. You know, you add that, and that's, you know, probably 600. Right. You know, yeah, mm-hmm, we're, mm-hmm. We're, 
Well, we're going to get Randy Maslowski on the line here in just about three minutes, but we got a couple ads that we got to do a real, a real quick first. Uh, we, we made mention of Total Destruction. Total Destruction's got a number of shows coming out. Their schedule continues to continues to evolve. You can find them online, www.totaldestructiondemo.com. Uh, all sorts of information on there. Make sure you have your volume turned down when you go visit that website. There is an announcer's call in the background that knocked me out of my chair when I got to visit that. <laughs> <laughs> that I was I was 100% not prepared for. But, yeah, yeah get on there. Lots of information. That, that whole website is going to be getting a facelift here soon. They're going to start uh, re-upping a lot of their, their activity on the Facebook page. And uh, we'll be having um, some more highlight reels and stuff coming from the Total Destruction Camp here uh, as we move forward. Um, Look for them. A lot of information, a lot of good stuff going on around Total Destruction. And uh, another group that's got some good stuff going on is the folks over at the Keystone Nationals. But uh, here's a little bit about them. The new rules are just right. Set aside July 19th for the reinvented Keystone Nationals. Again this summer, Bo Lockwood will host the Keystone Nationals at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds in Brookville, Pennsylvania. A revamped rulebook will help welcome an all-star field as a limited well division takes center stage and a feature paying $5,000 to win. Pre-entries for the stock division are already full. For more details, join the Keystone Nationals community online at www.facebook.com forward slash Keystone Nationals. Once again, the Keystone Nationals, July 19th, 2014 at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds, Brookville, Pennsylvania. <sighs> Trying to get Man Randy Maslowski on the line. He's not answering his phone. Might have a snowstorm. Oh, there you are. Hang on. And we also got Steve Bucknam on the line. I had to juggle a little bit there, but we got everything to work. Steve, talk. I'm here. I'm working. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> making making sure everything was good on your end, guys. Yeah, to, we're good. Here. Good, 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 good. We got Randy on the line as well. And I know Ben Ben was already talking. He had a whole list of questions ready for Randy <laughs> before we got going. So I'm going to turn. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's, yeah, the guy that doesn't like the morning. Ben's, yeah, he's got a lot of questions. <laughs> Ben's Ben's been on fire since he's been working on his rule book here, and he's he's like just just grab the bull by the horns. He's just ready to take everything over. He had a couple questions for for Randy. He's excited about getting out there. We're all excited, Randy. I mean, how's how's planning, Ben? I see you're up over 100 cars now. Yep, yeah, we did break 100. That's awesome. Uh, today, yeah, right now we're sitting at 103, and there's still there's still more in the works yet, from what I'm hearing. That's cool. Jesse Keel's got Josh's car all done, sitting in white paint, which is cool. The snowflake. Yep, the snowflake. <laughs> Josh, Josh messaged me the other night. He goes, I need decals for this car. I'm like, how, how are they going to stick? We get to tape them on? I mean, you got to you gotta bring a torch to heat them up so the, the adhesive will work. I think Josh's plan is that hopefully the white blends in with the snow and yeah. hide, yeah. and he isn't the center of attention when he gets out there. I, I think that's what his plan may be. Hmm. <laughs> That's it could. Uh, what, what, Steve? That's a bad plan. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm sure somebody's going to have some fluorescent orange paint and, you know, like, Right, Decker down the side of it. Yeah, yeah, that'll be that'll be pretty bright. Um, there was a little bit of talk that the show was going to be on pay per view, but we're 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 not doing that now. A little okay. little bummed out, but there was a lot of people that were like rallying behind that like crazy. Yep. But we want to make sure that the people turn out for the show and support the show right. first. And and you know if it's going to be ten degrees outside, you basically have to be there. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Come enjoy the day with us. <laughs> yep. That there's a there's sixty by sixty heated beer tent where Josh is going to park his derby car if it, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Actually, everybody can gather around that. <laughs> yeah, sixty by eighty. No, even another yeah. twenty feet. Yep, that that'll work. There's enough room for him to sign autographs by his twisted Lincoln. <laughs> hey, and the important thing is, is when uh, if anybody wants to meet anybody from the crash course, Chris will be the one running around the track with cameras to put on cars. Uh, the rest of us will be in the heated beer tent. So if you know, if you guys want to come on out and say hi, come on out and say hi. Did hey, my Chris? did my crates show up, Randy? I haven't seen him today, but then uh, I haven't answer. been home from work yet. So <laughs> <wrong> <laughs> <answer>. <laughs> uh, I am I am so nervous about that. <laughs> I, I hope they get there. The cameras, I still I kept the cameras home. I'm going to put those in in our uh, in our luggage. Those will go in the plane. That way, worst case, we can still make something happen out there. But ah. Uh, or we can video on the way down. Let video on the plane. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. They get weird when you start bringing electronic devices in the in, in planes. <laughs> Everybody got. Yeah. I don't know. Well, so what, uh, Randy? My big my question was what What was your projected uh, uh, car count? What were you looking for? Um, this this is right where I where we where we were last year. Really? Uh, yep, yep. Uh, last 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 year we I think we had a hundred and 
thirteen hundred sixteen. Nice, nice. So basically, the only thing a little light right now, from what I'm getting, is the trucks, huh? Yep, yep. Uh, and right then there again, right now, the truck count. I think we're still only like eight or nine, which is unusual. Really? I, I'm betting not. We'll, we'll we'll fill these back. We'll yeah. be we'll be 115 pretty easily. I'm better 10 110 115. I'm suspecting. Nice. Good deal. Excellent. Nice. That's excellent. Nice. That'll be that. Those trucks are going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't wait. I mean, if, if you, you've been following the pictures, what those look like? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they are some nasty looking machines. Those are not in the junk run. No. <laughs> <laughs> The way the forecast looks, I don't think we got to worry about moisture coming up through the track this year. No, no, no. It, it looks like it's going to be like what in the teens out there. Yep. Okay. Yep. A high, yep. high of eighteen, but they said no wind because it's in a valley, so we're good to go. Yeah, yeah. How? I, I'm not worried about wind. I'm worried about liquid crystal displays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they uh, they don't get happy when it's that cold out. So I'm I'm hoping that there's enough heat coming off the cameras. And we're, we've also talked about trying to rig up ways to put a heating pad with the camera to try and give it just enough warmth to get by. Them hand warmers. Things. Yeah, yeah. The, I I'm grabbing at straws is what I'm doing. Just any well, any idea. I, I do have a case of those hand warmers, and I also a have case. a heating pad. I'll be bringing them. <laughs> yeah. Steve's, Steve's not going to get cold. <laughs> well, no, I actually picked them up knowing that we might need them for cameras and stuff. So I hope to be enough for everybody. Yep, we're. I, I'm seriously considering running. I was going to run two cameras out there with the in cars, but now there's going to be one in car dedicated for each heat on the track, and probably one camera running while the other one's inside keeping warm and just rotate them through. Yeah, I'd. Because I don't want to bring I don't want to bring twelve cameras and then have all of them freeze. Because then I guess I'll really be screwed. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be hard to start your season with no cameras. <laughs> Done it before. <laughs> yep. So so Randy, we're getting close. I mean, how are, how are the uh, promoter nerves and anxiety? I mean, is it is it starting to ratchet up a little bit, or are you still all right? Oh, it's it's ratcheted up. Yeah, we're just kind of going through our final stages here. Um, on on my end here, um, I handle most of the driver stuff and. You know, preparation takes away a lot of that stress, and I'm, I'm sitting pretty good on that aspect. Um, we're all well, Wednesday. We got to get down there and find out what we got to deal with for track as far as snow removal. We've had a couple little little wind wind snowstorms here to where I don't know just yet how much snow is blown down there, but I know in my backyard I got like a foot and a half. Nice. Nice. We're supposed to get what like six to ten tonight. Six to ten overnight, and you know. <laughs> We're looking at a three-day <laughs> snowstorm. Into Wednesday, it's into Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday yeah. Tuesday yeah. into Wednesday. Yeah. Actually, we're, we're, it, sounds, it sounds like we're missing a couple storms here this week, which is which is really good for us because mm -hmm. we don't. Uh, they say we don't know exactly how much snow we got to remove down there, and it's it's uh, it can be a challenge with that part. It's thirty. It's a thirty-foot. It's a thirty-foot drop, right from from basically ground level to the bottom of the river. Oh, it's far more than that. Oh, good. It's, uh, it's far more than that because uh, you know, the, the trees don't even top. You know, we're, we're, we're down in the bottom the bottom river land. Right. And uh, the big trees that are down there, they're not even as tall as the level ground up there. So we're, we're in a pretty good deep hole. So you're going to have all this snow removed before we get there Saturday morning, right? Because I'd, I'd hate to show up and have you hand out snow shovels and say, all right, guys, give Dude, us a hand. I'm going for the plow shot. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought we, I thought we'd just leave some for you guys so that way you, we know that you won't get too cold. You'll warm up by right. oh, I, I can assure you as long as there's heat in the beer tent, we won't get too cold. <laughs> let the let the record show that Brian was the first one to volunteer how lazy he was. <laughs> well, Chris can attest. I don't I don't sit still too long. No, no. we'll have all that stuff taken care of by then. That's cool. I've got, uh, you know, I've got I got two other partners involved in this. Uh, Jeremy Ertman, uh, he handled a lot of that a lot of that stuff for me during the week here. He takes the whole week off of work and cool. goes down there and handles a lot of them loose ends. And we got a, another partner as well, uh, Joey Sanders. You know, he brings his equipment up for skid loaders and stuff, and between them and the fair board, um, we, we get her handled pretty good. We got a nice cool. crew to get get it work done. Good deal. Good deal. Nice. Now, uh, is the elder Maslowski, is his truck all ready to go? or? Well, I talked to him last night, and I, I think he's pretty well set to go other than, <laughs> other than a cooling fan, which he don't even care if he, if he even runs one. So no. 10 degrees, you wouldn't need one until, you know, late, late, late in the future, I would think. 
Well, it depends on how mad he gets. Oh, <laughs> awesome! <laughs> do you do you have in place an antifreeze rule? I mean, can you can you run regular coolant, or do you have to run water? No, we uh, we we let them run antifreeze. Uh, water wouldn't wouldn't handle it down here at all. No. no. <laughs> Bring no. a new meeting ice cube. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they'd have their own ice cubes out there. <laughs> yeah, cold block it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, they they had, they implemented that same thing at Sturgis. Yeah, it was because yeah. it was so cold. You know, basically, the guys were traveling so far that they yeah. they wouldn't be able to put water in it. They just physically couldn't do it. All the boys I talked to, it, 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 they didn't have a choice. I mean, they weren't gonna, you know, they weren't gonna take the chance with their motors and and you know they're gonna add a little antifreeze. It's it's just whether it was allowed or not, it was <laughs> happening. Steve, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> you know? Steve, Steve, Steve told me he was gonna help me out and put some some of the antifreeze in the margaritas that he's making. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Gotta, gotta keep everybody lubed up. <laughs> Good deal. Just the tow the tow down the road itself would be enough to freeze these guys up trying to even get them here. So. Yeah, absolutely. A- antifreeze the antifreeze is a must. Mm-hmm. Now, do you guys do you have guys coming in from other states, Randy, or is it just kind of a, a Minnesota show? Yeah, no, nope, no. Nope. Uh, this year, I think last year we had five states. This year, we've actually up to seven. Cool. Which, uh, Good yeah, deal. the states we got involved this year: uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska. And I got this weird one from New York. We don't we don't claim claim him. He's a big dog. He's flying in on a jet for this <laughs> for it. Yeah. He's going to show up. <laughs> Jet's going to land. He'll be carrying his helmet bag. Did, uh, did Did you see the Super Bowl when Joe Namath came out? That's that's the sort of entrance Decker's going to have. Come in with a fur coat and you know people to take his coat off and help him into the car and so just. just <laughs> uh. <laughs> to see, I guess. What have we done? Uh, uh, Jesse Keel, performance we ran, is putting that car together. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that is a. I saw pictures of it, and that is a awesome looking machine. Awesome looking machine. Needs decals, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Randy, I know. Uh, I know you've released. I believe it's the '80s car list, and the other classes aren't full, so those lists won't be released. But uh, in that class, with the names that have been released. Based on your past experience with this derby, who do you think are going to be the standout drivers in that class? Who should we be looking at now? Oh, boy. That's pretty tough. Um, there's, there's a lot of really good drivers that are in that class. Um, I guess the first guy you could probably watch would be uh, Colton Newhoff, and he's, he's won it the last two years in a row. Oh, wow. Colt, uh, I've definitely seen some stuff on Facebook uh, talking about him, very, so I very, recognize very the name as soon as you said it. So, um, you're not the first person year, to say so that, so I'll definitely keep my eye on him. A lot of them are heavy hitters as well. So it's, uh, yeah, you know what? I, I, if they can set the pace, it, it's no holds bar to who's going to come out on top because if, if you don't stay moving, if guys are freaking running across the track, mm-hmm. if we can give them a, a decent track to work with, it, I don't think there's going to be anywhere to hide. Not uh, Randy, on time frame wise, I'm just trying to get an idea because I met I met a bunch of uh, Minnesota guys uh, out at the bash a few years ago. Uh, what time frame wise are you looking at uh, per heats? You know, uh, from start to finish. Um, I think a lot of the I've never actually clocked it myself, but I would say anywhere from thirty to forty five minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. Cause I just, you know, I'm kind of basing that on some of the the YouTube videos that were posted that right, are timed, right? And I just it, I, it, it, it's not like it lasts an hour by any means, but right. a lot of it surely depends on what we can provide for the track. Right, right. It, it seems like when we get a little bit later, I mean, the first the first run, first feature or two usually aren't too bad, mm-hmm. but it depends on if we got a lot of sunlight. And that much traffic on on the track, it'll get greasy. Gets greasy, yeah. Yeah. And you get that antifreeze spread around. I yep. think it starts thawing the top layer. Yep. And then it gets then it gets greasy, and about all we can do is scrape it. Scrape yeah, it, yeah. The boys I talked to, they were pretty much they came to the bash and they were set up to run for uh, thirty minutes tops. <laughs> and and uh, pretty, pretty much, <laughs> they said uh, that's pretty much what our hometown shows usually. You know, thirty minutes, and and it's thirty minutes straight to the floorboard. So uh, um, that was some of the Pine City boys that I, I mentioned there. I think last time uh, that I asked you a couple questions there uh, a while back, but uh, 
they came down and uh, with a bunch of Imperials, but uh, it's, I'm looking forward to it because uh, that that region seems to put their foot down pretty good, and it should be a real entertaining show, I think. I saw one of the cars had a sticker on it said Minnesota style. Yeah. I, to, I like that. That was cool. And then did, did you see the one that had the, the bulldozer blade on the front of the car? And it said something about this is Minnesota's stock bumper, stock front bumper, no, something I like that. that. I oh, sent it to Decker. That's a, a model car that's floating around out there. Yeah. It says, you know, a, you know, basically like Minnesota says this is a stock car and it's got a big bulldozer yeah. blade on the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Ken Ch- uh, I, I hope I'm saying this. Ken Chivers. I, yeah. We I I robbed his picture. I saw he posted a picture. He was working on that blue eighty two, and I just took that thing for our show post. That that was that looks like that's going to be a fun car. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just it, I I got the itch. I just hope that everybody is just on the boards. I just want to see stuff get rocked. Yeah, me too. I'm hoping that it lasts somewhere between twenty and thirty minutes. I thought it was five to seven. You were well. I was there. my fingers were crossed, but I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping I'm hoping they run right about that time frame because it's about. I've, I've been doing some research on these JVCs, and and they in in sub zero of thirty minutes, huh? <laughs> yep, that's pretty much what you got. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, we, do, we do try and cater to the to the skinny pedal drivers that, that want to come. That's awesome. Every every, every class we do offer. A, it's a custom made trophy. I might have mentioned this before, but yep. it's a it's a custom made trophy out of camshafts, water pump pulleys, mm-hmm. push rods, wrist pins, pistons, whatever he can dream up, and he custom makes them for us. Mm-hmm. And that would be Terry Evans uh, from Badass Trophies. And after he's all done with them, he'll put his own own little styles on them, and then he'll clear coat them so they're protected. Yeah. And that's a that's a custom trophy that each in each class that he builds them for us for for that person. Plus we give them three hundred bucks cash. Wow! And then uh, then we even picked up some some extra sponsors to kick in for a runner up because there's always that close guy. Yeah. And uh, I got M and M Boys, uh, Elliott Motorsports, uh, Engstrom Graphics, and Mev's Mod Shop. Yeah. They're the, each one of them to step forward and, and they're donating right around a hundred dollar certificate towards their products for whoever gets judged to be the that, that close contender nice i've got a lot of best of shows or bad dogs and the best i ever got was a trophy never got any cash out of the deal of course it got me to a feature but i never got any cash out of the deal mm-hmm. <laughs> now them, them handmade trophies are, are starting to get uh pretty popular i mean there's yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's a bunch of them that, that have gone through wheel days yep and Field. steve steve made one for hartford he used a bunch of import parts though yeah i basically <laughs> just uh, went into my buddy's auto shop and he works on a bunch of uh, european stuff i just stole stuff out of his scrap bin and welded together something yeah that's he'd, cool he went out of like a you know old hp 440 or something you know? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be neat. That'd be neat. i know that was I, I was wondering when brandon was talking about the um no high high performance can you run a i mean hp 440 it's a stock it's a stock motor why not i mean that's it runs good uh, yeah yeah or 340 yeah there's uh, another one yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. If I to go the route of the small block that would be an excellent choice yeah yep um you know, I, was, I was wondering uh looking at some of the pictures of previous shows there i've seen a lot of like the the trucks especially but some of the compact cars too were up on the berm and kind of riding the wall a little bit. And I know that's kind of been a little bit of a topic the last few shows that we've covered, you know, uh, Sturgis and Blizzard Bash, how much of a, an issue the wall plays in the Derby. So uh, based on your experience, Randy, what do you think we're going to see out there this weekend? I mean, is it going to be uh, is it going to be really just driver versus driver, or does the wall play a huge part in that? Well, that's one thing that uh, I, I've always felt. If, if the guys are coming as far as they're coming, I want to make sure they get some run time. I know it takes away from the show a lot, but if, it, if in some case somebody does push somebody up, um, we do actually, if we can get to them and safely push them off, we do so. If not, uh, nine times out of ten here, we just we shut it down and pull them off and, and let them finish it on the track. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. You don't have That's to cool. you don't have to strategize around the wall one way or the other. You know, what's your, what's your escape plan and what's your plan to put somebody up on it? I mean, uh, if you if you barrel across the track and, and there's nobody there to hit and you just blatantly drive up there, well, we'll probably leave you at that point. But <laughs> 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 so if you get hit up there or something, you know, well, we'd, we'd, we'd stop it and pull them down. Yeah. 
Randy, I don't know if, uh, how busy you are between work and, and getting ready, but I've noticed a lot on Facebook and, and on WeCrash. There seems to be a lot of people, I mean, talking this show up. I mean, that's that's kind of got to give you a, a pretty good feeling, you know, the the, the amount of, uh, of uh, action that's going on about people talking about coming. Yes, yes, it really does. And my boss, my boss hates it a lot too because my phone is ringing and beeping all day, all day long between messages and Facebook and and the phone calls and whatnot. But he knows that you know with this side of it, he has to deal with that a little bit, and he gives me some pretty good allowance for that. That's cool. That's good of him. That's nice. Yeah. You know, you don't want to you don't want to be deterring people from 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 getting behind shows, and no. that's good. At the risk of sounding like I'm asking for a free plug here or anything. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. How much of the attention do you, do you think is kind of like a new avenue because of uh, dealing with Crash Course? I mean, do you think we've, we've helped you pick up some traffic, or are you seeing uh, pretty much the same as you've seen every year? Oh, no. No, it's, 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 it's more traffic than what we've seen. Crash Course has helped me quite a bit, uh, especially a few of the further out drivers. Um, even like some of the Nebraska guys and stuff, I know they came up and watched a few times, but I, I think, I think with crash course being involved, it, it pushed them over the edge and, and they're coming. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it has helped. And I, 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 to me, between me, Jeremy and Joey, we, we fully appreciate what you guys are doing. Good deal. Yeah, Thank you. You know, we're, we're trying, man, we're trying to, trying to generate more buzz around the show and, and we're going to do the. You know, early on, we'll do the pre-race show, and then afterwards, when everybody's when everybody's winding down, um, we'll do a short post-race show. Uh, I know there's an after party at one of the local establishments, so you know we don't want to keep everybody out in the cold if they got an opportunity to go in where it's warm. But you know, as long as as long as some people want to hear us jabber on about what they just just saw happen, you know, we'd be happy to, especially with uh, catching up with some of the drivers. It'd be a good time. Yeah, yeah. You know that uh, we we do have the like you mentioned there too is the after party. You know, granted, everybody's going to be cold and cold and whatnot, and they want to warm up in the hotels for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, one of the local bars, uh, Buster's Bar and Grill, they got awesome food to where if somebody, you know, leaves there, goes down and gets something to eat. We got a live band by, uh, what was that, Scarlet Country, I believe. Starts at 9 o'clock. And uh, we, we we bellied up and saw a show a little bit of token of our appreciation. We, we bought a couple kegs for the drivers and, Come, come in the back room and we bought a couple of kegs for them and some of our help and they're going to have discounts and stuff all night long up there so we'll, I have a feeling we're going to end up packing the place I don't I don't know how much general public is going to show up it, it may be a lot and it may be elbow to elbow I, we'll have to see how that pans out well that's going to be right up Josh's alley <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, Josh can't wait. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I hope there's I hope, I hope there's at least one chair where he can sit down when he has to sign autographs. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. We'll, I'll talk to the owner. <laughs> That's excellent. Well, you know, we're uh, we're certainly looking forward to it. We're gonna be we're gonna be flying out uh, about mid morning from here on Friday, and we should be getting in. Uh, Late evening, late night, whenever. So long as we don't encounter a whole lot of that snow during the travel, the flight out, we should we should be able to stay right on the schedule and and then uh and then from there, you know, we'll we'll find the hotel, get everything warmed up and, and final check over and away we go with uh with Saturday's program at the Napa Winter Slam. Cool, cool. Anybody else that you want to make mention of before we let you go? I guess uh, first and foremost, I, I got to give a, a loud shout to Napa. You know, they back, they got behind us three years ago, and they they pull a lot of strings for us and, and help us keep going financially as well. Um, I got uh, oh, way too many sponsors to list. I can go through them if you got some time. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you got to you got to take care of the guys that are taking care of you. Most certainly. Um, some guys at uh, Four Seasons Lawn and Snow uh, Powder Works out of Lake Crystal. I am, they do some powder coating of frames and whatnot, uh, motorcycle frames. Actually, I think they're going to have like a, a chassis down there on display in the uh, uh, swap meet building. They're going to they're going to have some stuff in there for us. Uh, Caduce Tire, Heifer Towing Service, 
CNS Supply out of Mankato, Shields All Sports, Jerry's Body Shop, and uh, there again, uh, the hardest hitters, M&M Boys, Elliott Motorsports, Ingstrom Graphics, Mev's Mod Shop. Uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier, uh, this is another thing about the hardest hitter side of things, East Central Lawn and Lawn and Sports. Give it away along more. I believe it's like a five or six foot trophy to the most aggressive hitter of the entire show. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> Josh, can I drive? <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping that the Lawn and Garden Place was going to donate like a hundred sandbags to the worst sandbagger. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Get <laughs> <laughs> them off right on their lawn. <laughs> That'd be cool. That yeah, I'm I'm not sure how that would go over, but it would be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would be funny. I, I may have missed a few here, but here and there, but uh, we'll make sure they get recognized the day of. But yeah, it's it's great. Get all these these people to come aboard and give us a hand with this because the expenses of the winter derby itself it it is much more than what you got during the summer. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then then we've got. SB Motorsports announcing is going to be bringing you the call. Right, Steve? You excited? I'm going to certainly do my best. Uh, <laughs> of the whole show, I'm probably most excited personally about the trucks. Um, we, we have some trucks out here on the East Coast, but they're all newer style, um, pretty stock builds. So to see some of these really built older school trucks, I'm really, really excited about those, see how they come out. Um, one question I did have, Randy, about the trucks was do you allow four-wheel drive or are they two-wheel drive only? Uh, they're they're two wheel only. They do have the choice of of running front or rear. They got to pull one shaft. Mm-hmm. But I I've seen very few people running the front side, the the front drive shaft because your your steering is so vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, sure. You're you're. I would say I don't think you're going to see any of them that are front. They're all going to be rear. Well, I'm excited mm-hmm. to see it, and well, I'm certainly going <laughs> to. <laughs> I'm, I'm certainly going to do my best to call it well. Uh, I've been kind of healing up all week. I got a little bit of a cold in Sturgis, but uh, just on the tail end of it now, so I'll be good to go for Minnesota. Just in time to pick up another one, Steve. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, S- Steve, are, are you going to wear your, uh, your your typical announcing garb with the shorts and T-shirt? or? You know, I picked up some long underwear, so if I have to put like some long underwear and then, then maybe the shorts on over those, maybe I'll do that. Who knows? No, as a true derby guy, I mean, you know, all this derby guys got to have a little bit of a screw loose. I mean, you don't derby anymore, but you still got the screw loose. I think you should break out the shorts, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do what I can. You know, it, it depends on what they got for a setup there. If it's a wireless mic, then it's nice to have those shorts with the pockets, so we'll see. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 like out I can, buddy. Put some pink ones underneath them. There you go. <laughs> <That'd be cool. laughs> I'm just figuring what they're gonna look at me like when I get on a plane with a mad bomber hat on. <laughs> 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 uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna be loaded for bear with 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 cold weather gear and and. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Just a couple days away now. It's going to be Saturday, February 8th, Napa Winter Slam, Garden City, Minnesota. Live show, uh, pre-race, and then we'll do a post-race show as well. We're going to do what we can to tape it and produce a DVD out of this thing. I'm, I'm scared to death for the camera equipment. I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see. We'll know We'll know soon. You know, and Randy and I appreciate everything, and uh, and we'll we'll be uh, we'll be in touch this week. Um, just drop me a text and let me know if those cases show up. Uh, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, you know, best of luck. Hopefully, the weather holds out. Good luck getting everything cleaned up, and we'll be seeing you here in a couple of days. Awesome. See you guys. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, we'll Randy. catch you with yeah. you soon. Hey, bye. Bye now. There goes Randy Maslowski. Appearing on the Derby Parts.com hotline, crash course presented by Keystone Nationals. I'm excited. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, just to get out there and, and see a, a Derby Minnesota is going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, hopefully I don't leave one of my fingers there. That'll be, <laughs> that'll be something I'm be happy to come home with all 10 of them instead of having Frostbite claim one or, or multiple. And, uh, or toes. Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing my boots. I'm going to have to. I, I've, I, put, I put as many sweatshirts 
and as many pairs of socks I could cram into that case with all the sound equipment yeah. and, and sent that stuff too so I don't have to bring a lot of extra stuff with me because Steve Bucknam and I are going to share a suitcase, and that's uh, that's breaking news right here, heard here on the Crash Course. We're also going to stick all the GoPro <laughs> cameras and everything in the bottom of the suitcase so that we got room to, to just get everything there and and uh, keep those as, as warm as we can in in the trip. I am nervous. I know Monday. I'm good. Monday. I'm gonna feel like when we got back from Kansas. I already know it ahead of time. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be a lot it's, shorter it's, day. Yeah, it's back gonna. Sunday. Oh, I'm, it's gonna. It's not. It's not even gonna have anything to do with the travel. I'm just gonna worry myself sick. Over, Pure anxiety. Over, oh, it's, I, I've been talking back and forth with Steve, and and he he's tired of hearing about it because I'm, do I bring the new stuff that looks better, or do I bring the old stuff that's expendable? You know, what do you do? And and you know, bring bring what works. Bring, right. Yeah, I'm not bringing. I'm not going to put all my eggs in that basket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I mean, I might only bring three of the GoPros just in case those things freeze up and something happens to them. I don't know. I don't know. Come on, GoPros are supposed to go on anything. We're going to be writing a really positive or really <laughs> negative letter here. <laughs> <laughs> I've been GoPros, not GoFros. <laughs> yeah. hey, if, the, if this works out, maybe you could pick up that GoPro sponsorship you were hoping for, buddy. Could. <laughs> could yeah or or, they or could, you're gonna show up at their office <laughs> tuesday morning throwing cameras through the front window one of the two yeah that 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 wouldn't land me in jail <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't worry about it jail's nice yeah, yeah. spent a lot of time there yeah, yeah you, you you know what the accommodations look like because yes, you work there because you work there don't of take that, don't everybody take that out of context <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. While we're all in the same room, guys, uh, take a look at the Delta website. Get the measurements for the suitcase. Yep. Uh, I went and did that, so I know mine mine fits within one inch, and 48. there's a weight restriction on that too, so we have to make yeah, sure. It's like yeah. fifty some pounds and like 40, yeah, 50, 48 forty eight inches. I went to the American. Aren't we flying American? Total. Uh, Was it? They're, they're, they're the same. They're owned okay. by the same company now, I believe. Yeah, it's uh, it's fifty pounds and sixty two inches total when you measure length and width and height. That's 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 not for the carry on though. That's for the like actual baggage. That's right? the checked bag. The luggage, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Carry on's like forty some inches. Yeah, forty two. No, I got. I'm sad. I got vacuum. I got vacuum <laughs> suction bags. I'm like, My wife started so started getting stuff ready for me last night. So. Seriously? You yeah. can't even pack your own bag? <laughs> what can I say? I gotta you go are a, You are a demo. She hasn't she hasn't packed anything. She wait, said, wait, 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 you, what do you wait. want? <laughs> disclaimer. Disclaimer. Here comes the excuses why his wife has to pack a bag. Take She's, it take it, Derby Child. <laughs> <laughs> She's not packing. I have I have today and tomorrow <laughs> off. Wednesday I work a double and then she has like doctors and stuff to do. Okay. Thursday there's either a kid a doctor appointment or a kid and a wife doctor appointment. I'm leaving Friday at 7. At what point shouldn't my wife help me? She shouldn't. You should be able to handle packing a bag. I know it's going to be cold out. I know I'm going to need at least this much clothing and I'm pretty much good. I I know where the luggage is kept in our house. So do I. Well, then fill it. <laughs> I. She hasn't packed it. She just has the stuff out. She's got she, it. Said here you go. On on Derby Saturday in Seneca County, because you're not going to be at the Keystone Nationals. You're going to be here. Um, is she going to lay out your outfit for that too? No. No. Not at all. No. Not at all. <laughs> when, what about work? Does she press your shirt for you before you go? You know, serving corrections. This is crazy to me. No. No. Not at all. Wow. Oh boy. Did she pack you snacks on the plane? Hey, it's a. <laughs> she she asked if we were driving or flying. You can get snacks on the plane. You don't have to pack. Them. She asked. She asked because she's concerned about me and the. You rest can only of the get crew. snacks on the plane if they're free. <laughs> <laughs> because she's concerned about me and the crew, she said, "Are you still are you flying pack. or are you driving?" And I said, "We're flying." She said, "Well, I was going to get you guys some stuff." If you were driving, so the next time I won't share my snacks with you. <laughs> you probably would. You would probably be getting pretzels and combos and Pringles and other great things. I would that get, all have wheat in them. I would get gluten free snacks <laughs> just for you because I care. Gluten free snacks, yeah. Because I'm that kind of you guy. You wouldn't though. She would be getting them, and <laughs> we would be getting them. <laughs> we, because I'm that kind we, of guy. We, what she got a mouse in her pocket? I care about you as a human being, Chris. Ah, <laughs> uh, I wish I could believe that. <laughs> All the right. Abuse I take. The abuse. <laughs> Good thing I have big shoulders. Hey, hey, uh, you think you think you had to take that kind of abuse back in the day at Waterloo? 
can you can you not can you not bring that up because it really 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 bothers a certain person out there and let the record show that i didn't bring it up this week. i think every time you say the word water you gotta drink a keystone yes i gotta drink a what gotta drink a keystone yeah that ain't happening <laughs> gotta drink. i i i might have drank two keystones in my life i'm good there buddy Look up our buddy Josh Wagner, FTS Racing. He's desperately trying to get to Napa Winter Slam. We're going to be there. We'll be showing up Friday night. Look us up. We're going to be in Mankato. I think it's the Super 8. If not, look for the Crash Course Crew at one of the other hotels. I'm not even sure where we're staying. we got the itinerary. We're going to map all that stuff out. We're looking forward to it. Guys, that's going to do it for this week. Thanks for joining us and hanging out with us. Hopefully you got some laughs out of that. Brian sure didn't. We'll catch up with you soon. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>